As I keep on exploring, I begin to notice that so strong is the Sultan's presence here that it has shaped the face of his cities. If town planning in Oman gives an impression of uniformity, that's because the houses are all more or less modeled on the old fortifications. And those forts are very highly valued here. A recent restoration program has brought them strangely up to date. The simplicity of these structures with their towers, their surrounding walls and their battlements finds an echo in the city's houses. Over the fort flies the national flag with its kanjar, the traditional dagger, and two crossed swords. So what do these weapons signify on the flag, and where are they made? I was born here, and I remember my father would bring me to the workshop when I was just a baby. I used to watch him work. But he's not very well now, so I've taken over and I run the workshop now. Every dagger that comes out of this workshop is unique, custom made to feature its future owner's chosen motifs. This kind of dagger has been a part of Arab culture for a very long time. All Arabs used to carry daggers, but they took different forms. For instance, a Yemeni dagger is big and straight, while other ones are curved. It all depends where they're made. In Saudi Arabia, they have big, very curved daggers. In Syria, they're different again. It depends on the country. The Omani dagger has a very recognizable form. I admire this solid silver piece that's worthy of a jeweler. I watch a really valuable object take shape halfway between jewelry and embroidery. We call the cane El Bakur, like the dagger. It's an accessory you carry to look distinguished on less important occasions than ones you'd wear the dagger for. Like the Kanjar, this cane is carried by Omanis to look elegant and respectable, in the same way Westerners would wear a tie. 
it calls to my mind the Bedouin I met in the desert, who used his stick for emphasis. Older people use it as a walking stick, too. When you go to a funeral, for example, you don't wear a dagger, you just take your cane. Of course, every Omani would like to have his own dagger rather than borrow one or rent it, but not everyone can afford one. It's a valuable thing, you know, something you leave to your children. Our Western society, with its love of materialism, tends paradoxically to forget the true value of objects. Here, when you pass down a dagger, you're handing on a part of your cultural heritage. I understand now why it's on the flag, and I think back to the start of my journey and to the market at Sinal. I remember the men with their dagger in their belt and a cane in their hand. <laughs> 